and welcome to McCool and the Gang. This month I speak to DJ and producer Emily Nash. 21 year old Emily is already making waves in the world of electronic music with her recent single Garden being championed by tastemakers including BBC Radio 1's Pete Tong, Charlie Hedges and Jaguar who have all selected it as their respective hottest track of the week. Her next single Chemical Embrace is coming out this summer on Ministry of Sound followed by a set at Creamfield which is amazing. I chat to Emily about what inspires her, the creative elements of DJ and live and all her favorite sounds and tricks here we go i think you're a magnet and i'm a magnet too people just attract like magnets like me and you hey how are you yeah i'm good thanks how are you i am so good so i'll do my intro spiel um welcome everybody to McCool and the Gang, which is my podcast. I am Natalie McCool. And this month we have fantastic DJ and producer Emily Nash. Woo! Well, hey. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> How are you? How's your weekend been? Yeah, it's good. Um I mean I'm finally on the road driving, so I just spent like all day yesterday sorting out my car, um, working on some new tunes and just getting like the next single ready, really. Yes. What what car do you have? Um, it's just it's a Peugeot two hundred six. It's just a little old one for now, but I don't trust myself getting a new car yet in case I crash it. So run around in this, and then we'll see how see how I go at the end. <laughs> yeah, I've got I've got I used to have a two hundred six, and now I've got two hundred eight. I oh, really like, upgraded myself, but yeah. it, there's just no point in having any sort of nice car in London because people just oh god yeah um, people They're all just wild. battered. <laughs> yeah yeah it's like have you ever been to naples i haven't no you like do not drive around naples because people will just like it they they have a death wish i swear <laughs> stay away from that <laughs> stay away from naples man don't ever tour in naples keep away no um amazing <laughs> so i've i've just been on your instagram and spotify like educate myself and it yes. just looks like you're doing so much awesome stuff at the moment, like loads of DJing and I know you're playing Creefields this year. So yeah, oh, tell yeah. me what's going on at the moment for you. Yeah, it's crazy. So I played Creamfields last year as well. And like when I first got there, there was literally like three, four people in this tent dancing. I was like, oh, this is going to be good. But then literally towards the end, the whole tent was packed. And I was like, oh my God, like what's happening? Because that was my third ever gig my first one was egg london second one was leeds festival third one cream fields and it's just like i mean not even the biggest people sometimes get to play there so i felt really lucky and then i'm back there this year as well and um i just got a lot of festivals and little clubs booked really and my next gig is next week opening for ibiza rocks and i was literally in ibiza cool. the other week i was like yeah i was like i just want to play here and then I had the offer come through i was like oh my god I'm back again. <laughs> so yes, yeah, it's just like nice. flying everything. It's just going really well. Oh, that's so cool. I'm I'm like kind of no bits and bobs about the dance electronic world, but what is Ibiza Rocks? Is that like a gateway gig to the festival or what what is that? Yeah, so it's like um the DJ booth's like in the middle and then you've got like a pool. It's sort of like a pool party. Oh my god, um, it's like M- MTV back in the day. You know, yeah, it's <laughs> like have all the pool parties, amazing. But yeah, it's like it'll be like my first proper like uh, summary, I guess, gig uh, pool party. So it should be interesting. I've got a good track list set up. Um, hopefully, play out my new single, which should be out in the summer sometime. Um, it's a little bit different nice. to obviously I had Garden, which is like a tech house track, but the next one's more like dancey. Um, but yeah, mm. it's definitely one for the summer. Yes, nice. We were just talking about that. What what do you prefer? Like, because I'm such a indie like rock head. Um, yeah, I love I indie know, music I, as well. <laughs> I kind of know my sub genres within the dance world, but educate me. Like, what are the kind of different sub genres, and what what ones do you prefer? Yeah, so I mean, I like to produce D and B, but um, that's like my other part when I have like more time to do. So I mostly concentrate on like tech house, dance music. Um, Garden, the last release was tech house. And then this new release is more like dancey. Um, mm. I've got some inspirations like MK Gorgon City. And this one's definitely more up like the Gorgon City roof. Like, oh, um, nice. Okay. 
yeah, like it's got like this deep bass. It's so so catchy, and I just can't wait to share it with everyone. Oh, great, great. So, like, what what is inspiring you at, at the moment? Then I think it's just like from lockdown. Like everyone was just at home, and I got a lot of inspiration from like just watching all these videos of people and then actually now coming out and you seeing all these DJs letting out all this new music, playing all these different places. It just inspires yeah. me watching it. I'm like, this is what I want to do. And I think like it's happening, I'm climbing up. And like before 2022, I had this bucket list and literally half of it has been ticked off already. And it's just, it's crazy. Like I wake up, I'm just like, is this actually happening? <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Like enjoy it, just enjoy it. Yeah. I, I always find that um, watching other artists perform, like, and it, they don't have to be like, you know, my absolute heroes. It can be like anyone that I just come across that I, you know, you, you just find these little bits in people's performances or music that you just think, oh, that's so cool, like really inspiring. Yeah. I think, yeah, that's that's the number one thing that does actually uh, motivate me and inspire me is going and watching other other performances. Um, because, like, Spotify is so... I just find you can just get lost in it a bit and it's kind of a bit... There's so much new music All and so time. much music. Where do I even start exactly. discovering it? I don't know they kind of help you along <laughs> in discovering new music, but yeah. there's no, nothing like going out for yourself and, like, just stumbling on, like, a random performance and you're just like, what is this? Um, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I remember when I went to, um, I was at this gig in Liverpool, like really randomly, and Young Fathers came on. It was like a festival, and this is before they were like really well known. And they just like tore the roof down. Like they were incredible. Wow. And I just love seeing that. Like, it's so inspiring. When I was in Ibiza the other week, yeah, so I, it was the first time like me actually going clubbing. So before I went, um, I was probably like 16, 17, so I couldn't get into any of the clubs, but I went to Amnesia with my management and Sarita, I think she's just joined. I watched her there and I was like, this is just like insane to get to Amnesia, like see all these people dancing in Ibiza. And I was just like, yes. this is what I want to do. And even that was an inspiration being there, like her playing all these mad tunes and seeing everyone dance and just enjoy themselves and just getting lost in the music. like. That was a real opener as well because it's just like I see people playing and then there's like another door to someone else playing. It's just like it just gets better and better and better. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I always find like listening to recorded music can be quite flat sometimes and there might be something in that that is not highlighted very well or like, you know, and then when you see it live it's like oh that makes sense now like so so many artists I've seen live that I've not really been into on record and I'm like no it makes complete sense now and I love it just yeah, yeah it's great yeah N never forget live music come on people oh <laughs> can't beat it <laughs> you can't beat it it's been a long old time without it as well and oh god it has yeah get back out there yeah yeah I mean I don't I don't see any more lockdowns happening well I hope <laughs> mm, yeah hopefully not hopefully we're here to stay yeah um, fingers crossed fingers crossed so how do you how do you make music then you know do you go to do you have your own studio or do you like to collaborate with other people yeah so I have like a little I just call it like a little bedroom studio really um I just use my laptop um a little keyboard and I'm ready to go the software I use is logic um and like, yeah, like I don't, I don't think you need like this fa a fancy studio of all these like thousand of pound plugins. Like it's just all on my laptop and it's there. And I mean, you can make a decent song, if not better throughout that. Mm. Um, but I find like I went to college for about three years and then I came back and I found that YouTube actually taught me probably more. And so for anyone like watching who wants to know how to start producing, I definitely recommend YouTube is the first place to start there's just so many videos out there so many mm. like great um people and they just yeah everything's just there it's ready to go and like i said you don't need expensive equipment you just literally need like a software laptop and like just a little keyboard and yeah you're off <laughs> like a little keyboard like this one yeah exactly <laughs> that's all you need that's all you need man 
I agree. You know, I, I never... Well, I went to Lippo, which is like a performing arts school in Liverpool, and did a like, performing arts degree, which was like music, but they had like performing arts and then music, two different degrees. And music used to get to do production. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, and then... But performing arts, you had to do dance... So I'm... Um, that was the same at my college. Bizarrely, yeah. So I did, like, three years of dance and obviously, like, I'm not a dancer. Um, but I so wish I'd gotten that production, <laughs> like, tuition earlier on. Yeah. They put me in the performing arts class before I actually went into production. They were like... Because I, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I went down to college and I was like, oh, I really like music. So they'd put me in this um, performing arts thing for probably, like, a few days and I was, like, playing the drums. But then... Like, thankfully, the the guy was like, oh, you know what? Do you want to try, like, the production side? So he put me in the production side, and that was where, like, I was like, oh, this is actually what I really like, and it, that's where it, like, mm. took off. Um, so it was quite good that I managed to switch, like, last minute. Yeah, that's really good. Like, really, yeah, really lucky, but but also the right thing to do, I think. Just educate yourself early yeah. on. I wish I'd done that. I do love the performing art side as well. Yeah. Not so much dance these days, though. <laughs> Not really. Yeah. <laughs> the dancer. But um, yeah, lately I've I've been on this whole journey of learning about production, um, and I've loved it. Like, really love becoming more s- self sustainable in that way. Um, yeah. And yeah, I say this every time. Like, literally every time I speak to another female creator, I'm like, yeah, I just think it's so important for girls to to know that look you, you you can do all this technical stuff and there's nothing stopping you aside from you know your own doubts yes exactly and yeah you just get stuck anyone in. can do get it get stuck in yeah and i think that was what stopping me for a long time it's like oh not really like you know how the hell would i know how to do like and oh, like in, indifference but self-doubt as well but now i'm like come yeah. on you need to do it um yeah you just gotta keep going for it like when i first started um i uploaded to bbc uploader and i just thought this isn't i shouldn't have doubted myself i was like this is this isn't gonna get anywhere and within a few days it's like oh you're gonna be on radio one and i'm just like how did that happen and then so yeah don't doubt yourself definitely just carry on and something will happen something will come out yeah yeah go the go the opposite like be overly confident i think just overly confident yeah. <laughs> and, and then hopefully the rest of the world will follow um exactly yeah. but um what kind of um you know what what kind of plugins do you like or gear do you use because i'm always interested in what gear people are using to be honest i use a lot of just the normal standard logic plugins mm. but um the one to make my bases i always use serum oh yeah and serum. then i, I just <laughs> yeah, I have this look. I have one called like Little Alter Boy that just adds yeah. like extra bits, which is good. But to be honest, I don't really have many. I've like I have four, like, four or five main ones that I use, and I'm good to go. But Serum is the one for me, and everything's there. I get most of my sounds from that. To be fair, yeah, I've heard a lot about Serum. I, I, uh, and like, tr- is it like the, tr- um, what's it called? Trill, Trillion. Yeah, um, that's quite good. But I need I need to explore. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I think that one um, can like, it, it's good for like, arpeggiated bass lines and like rhythmic making it rhythmic. Yeah. Um, but yeah. yeah, I'm so like stuck to these ones. I'm not just, like looking outside the box to fi- go and find more. But I think, yeah, I'll start doing that. See if I can come up with any more yeah. sounds. Yeah, definitely. Like you've got to start with something and and master that, and then you can look outside and see. Yeah. What there is. Um, so let's talk about Garden and your la- latest single. Yes. Um, I had a listen and it's already been championed by Pete Tong. Crazy. Radio 1, which is amazing. <laughs> and Jaguar. So awesome responses. And how did you... What was the inspiration so behind that? the vocal is actually a it? sample vocal. And I'd heard it and it was like, I made this track back in lockdown. Um, so it was, it was quite an old one. Mm. And I came across this um, vocal and I was like, oh, this is a bit different. It's interesting. So smacked it into Logic, um, started building the track around the vocal. I didn't actually have an instrumental first. It was all made around this vocal. Um, I had like this mysterious mm. like synth. It's quite unusual if you listen to the track um, that just went 
really nicely with it. And then I literally just had like a simple bass in the bass. It's just one note, just pressing it over and over again. And it all just came together really fast. Like, I don't think it took that long to actually make the track, but I find the tracks that take the shortest time are always like my best tracks. If I'm spending hours and hours, like mm. I just like goes around my head. I'm like, oh, this isn't working anymore. Um, but yeah, I just literally came across this vocal, built it around that and that's how it happened. And everyone was just loving it. And they were like, wow, this is something different. It's like a haunting tech house, I guess. Cool. Yeah, I, I thought it was the vocals quite unusual. And I was wondering, was that a top line specifically for the track? And that was interesting that you said that you found it online. Yeah, built around it. Yeah. Where do, where do you like, where do you find your your top lines and stuff? Um, you could just get like sample packs or, okay, so I mean, a lot of people use Splice as well. And there's like, I mean, I think you pay like monthly subscription and then you get um, credits and then you use the credits to get vocals and other stuff. But mm. it is a good starting place if you want to, if you can't get in touch with vocalists, it is a good starting place to get some vocals yeah. and start making a track. Definitely agree with that. Like, it's so interesting because I am... Um... <laughs> probably shouldn't say this on on my own instagram but i have a little side hustle that i do like electronic top lines for and i don't know oh, whether cool. you know G- genix genix i'm not sure he's like he's an artist on nanjuna beats which is uh, an electronic yeah. label cool and i did a track with him on under my um my kind of little what's it called like um alias alias that's yeah. the one um, and it's called Numb, but I just, yeah, I love I love doing stuff like that. I'll have to have a listen. Yeah, give it a listen, Numb. Um, and we're doing another track at the moment, but that's under my like other name, which is Leica. Oh, interesting. For anyone who's like, who is who is this double artist? Um, <laughs> but yeah, I find it so fun. Like it's because it's such a different world to me. Um, yeah. And what I do, it's just really interesting, and I'm always like interested in. Um, what artists like yourself look for in a in a top line and yeah, you know if you, if you were if you were to have someone to kind of write a top line for you, what would you what would you look out for? So whenever I normally go into the studio, a lot recently, I'm just like looking for that catchy vocal that you know someone's gonna hear it once and mm. instantly they'll remember it and they'll sing it back. It's almost like just fighting because I, I eventually mm. whether it will ever happen I just want like a number one with just like this classic catchy vocal like Joel Corey all his stuff is just like you hear it once you know every single lyric yes. so I just sort of want a track like that really um but like I said I like my tech house and I like my drum and bass so whether there'll be a drum and bass track release at some point in the future maybe but at the moment I'm just really concentrating on like the dance side of my tracks for the next few releases mm. um but yeah, I'm excited for this next track. I just want to like let everyone hear it. But I mean, it should be out soon. <laughs> and the track is called Chemical Embrace. It is, yes. What inspired the name? Um, it's actually like in the vocals, really. Um, ah. Yeah, I don't. I can't say too much about it, but it's all like when you've heard the vocals, you'll be like, ah, that's that's where it's from. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can't wait to hear that. I, I, yeah, I, yeah. I think Garden is awesome, so I'm excited to. Oh, thank you. Hear more. Slightly different to Garden, but it's, but yeah, mm. it's still cool. <laughs> yeah, the, you've got to like, you know, you've got to have that breadth of, um, like variation in your work, haven't you? So keep people. Oh yeah, guessing, definitely. People interested. And it just shows what, yeah, what you can do, doesn't it? Yeah, I don't want to be just like an artist that sticks to like one genre. I want to show like all these other sides that I can mm. do because it's, like, it's not wasted, but no one ever sees it. It's just like, it's just sitting there. So I'd rather do something with it and share it with everyone. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think that if you're like really into it and that shows your passion and that side of it and people will just think that's cool and follow it and embrace it as much as you are i just yeah that's what's about for me yeah um, exactly <clears throat> so i have a question about um just like the, the the summer really and can you tell us what kind of festivals you'll be playing what's coming up yes yeah, so next week i be the rocks week after i've got radio one coventry which i can't wait for um yes and then i think 
week after that I'm in Italy playing Nameless Festival. I've never been to Italy before, so that should be fun. Oh my god, amazing. Um and then after Italy's that I've got glorious. Oh, I can't wait. I really can't wait. I think I'm only literally gonna go for like the day or stay one night, so it's just a quick in and out trip, but I'll try and see as much as I can. <laughs> yeah. Um and then I've got like yes. Creamfields, uh Sundown Festival. I played that last year. That was really good, one of my favourite festivals. Um, I've got a few yeah, I've gigs heard of that in, one. yeah, a few gigs in like London, a few like little clubs. Um, but yeah, it's, it's I'm pretty busy to be fair for um like the first proper year like releasing with a major label with Ministry. Um, but it's, yeah, mm. I couldn't be happy. It's going really well. Oh, that's so sick! Yeah, as I said, enjoy it. Yeah. What like what tracks from your contemporaries or like your you know your heroes are inspiring you at the moment yeah so i'm always like i always listen to like gorgon city sirens album that's one album that really inspires me um but like you've got mk as well sunny Federa, all like these dance sort of um genres i guess and um there's a few like upcoming artists as well that i really love like near archives um there's one my mate called louis mills um someone called hysteria he's sick as well like they're all my friends so they're all my age so it's just like cool watching them grow up yeah. with me as well and seeing where we all i guess we'll be in like five years time together <laughs> yeah oh i love it you've got a big up like your, your mates and who, yeah who you're listening to as well i think it's dead important just oh, have your own little community yeah what um how, how did you because i kind of skipped this um like, how did you start then? Because you said you went to college yes. and did pro- the production side. Yeah, so it actually started, um, I was at school and I was going to go into sixth form and I didn't get a high enough math GCSE. You had to get like a, I think it was like a C to actually get into the sixth form. And I, I don't even know what I got. I just know I failed. <laughs> and um, <laughs> yeah, the teacher was like, oh yeah, you you can't come to the, to, um, the sixth form anymore. So... I was like left with nothing to do. So just went down to college and they were like, what do you enjoy? And I was like, I really just enjoy music. And that was just the one thing um, I really loved. So it all just kicked off from me not getting my maths GCSE. Like if I'd have got maths, I'd have been doing like art or something, something that I'm not probably even that bothered about. So yeah, (laughs) thankfully, I mean, you don't, you don't need GCSEs for everything. (laughs) Yeah, like absolutely not. I feel weird going to like university studying something like music because it's like it's just so not academic at all is it like yeah it's it's yeah it's a bit weird isn't it but I'm really glad I went because obviously I met like like all my mates who were in music of course like, yeah I bet you had some good parties them. oh it was amazing like honestly it was <laughs> I, I wouldn't wouldn't ever take it back no um but at the same time I think there's something about um going out by yourself and finding that community in the real world like straight off the yeah. bat it's like really brave and cool and must be amazing as well oh definitely uh, yeah. it's, un- it's unreal like my first gig was at egg london and i'd never like played out to anyone like my mom and dad would be like oh come downstairs bring the decks and play to us and i didn't feel embarrassed but i just didn't like have the courage to do it but then i'd go mm. to egg london and play in front of hundreds of people and then all suddenly it just came naturally and I was like, oh, it's actually fine to do this. And then obviously the second gig was at Leeds and there was even more people. And I just like, mm. everyone's like, do you feel nervous? And for some reason I just had like no nerves at all. And going on stage now, like you just, there's just nothing there. I'm like, I'm just ready to go. I'm ready to play these tunes to everyone who's yeah. here to see me, I guess. Yeah, that's what it's all about. I love that. I, yeah. I get really ner- nervous still, but it's like manageable like yeah i'm the same like i just want like the waiting is the worst i'm like i just want to get on and play my music and just not have this awful wait you're there waiting like 10 minutes to go on for yourself yeah yeah but as soon as you like press play or start playing your first song you've got it yeah we we supported one bats on the last date of the tour in liverpool oh sick yeah yeah i was thinking like i was so excited but before before we went on and I was looking at the crowd going oh my god oh my god but then when I got on I was just like I'm literally having the time of my life I bet it was a massive crowd as well yeah it was great it was it wow. was brilliant but 
you've just got to do it. I love the wombats. They're so cool. They are just such a lovely bunch as well. Like I wrote the yeah. some of the album with the drummer Dan. Um. Oh, cool. And that's how it all kind of came about. But yeah, it's the just lovely wow. as well. What a privilege. Um. Yeah, I, I was going to ask as well. Like I know absolutely nothing about DJing, but I like would love to try it, and I think it's sick. But is it is it very yeah. different from because obviously when you're DJing you are effectively improvising and creating on the spot, and I just wondered how, yeah. I just wondered how different it was like being in the studio, and then be doing it live. Like, is it what what are the things you enjoy about it? Yes. Yeah, so when I first started DJing I I didn't have like anyone teach me I just went straight my nan bought me my first pair of decks so I was incredibly lucky yes nan. and I literally went straight onto YouTube I was like right how do I set these up how do I start how do I even get songs into the yeah. USB because I'd literally like dragged some songs onto the USB put it into the decks and it didn't work then I found out you had to have a software to yeah. put it through so thankfully YouTube helped me with it all um, so I practiced a few times in my bedroom. I did a few mixes for like various radio shows. Um, a lot of people said like they're really good mixes. So I was hopeful, like no one said, oh, you can't mix. So that was all right. <laughs> um, and then like, yeah, just going up to the stage, you have like all these songs. Um, it was, it was pretty simple to be fair. As long as you have like a lot of practice before and you know what you're doing, it was good. And I think it just really depends on what the crowd's like. Like it's hard, but you've got to read the crowd. Like, you could be playing tech house, but then if you switch it to like drum and bass, they'll be like mm. going mad. And I sort of just play the tracks on what sort of crowd I have. So the other day I played Highest Point Festival and it was a lot of like children. It was like a very mixed crowd, moms, dads, children yeah. and like teenagers. So I played like tunes that everyone would know, but then there's like hard drops in there as well. And everyone just seemed to love it. So it went yeah, down really cool. well. And I, I always see people messing with kind of like reverbs and delays and like how, how yes it, it must take a while to get right because you know you see these videos of like bad transitions and you're like oh my god if i ever i would be so mortified but like yeah yeah when i first did it like obviously you've got like flanger effects and phases and stuff and i just like put that on anywhere like there'd be a drop and i'd be like you know what let's just put it here but it did not work and then Shortly after, you realise you your ears adjust to it, and you're like, right, it needs to go here. Switch mm. it here, and it sort of just comes naturally after you've practiced a lot. And I just like with the reverb, like you don't always need it, but if you've just got like a vocal with like nothing behind it, it's called cool to like just reverb that out and things like that. But it just sort of like comes naturally after you've done it for a little bit and had a little practice. Yeah. And, yeah, you know where to put it at the end. Yeah, I I see the similar similarities with like you know singing and playing the guitar. Like you know when to drop it down it's just like instinctive yeah and it's really all about dynamics isn't it like you know when to go hard when to pull it back um and like the textures yeah, like exactly. laying on on top of each other it's just so interesting um yeah it's so cool yes. i love this um but yeah i i mean do you want to I think we're going to wrap it up in a second, but do you want to kind of give us some tracks you've been listening to? Like specific, I know you mentioned artists, but like any specific tracks we should check out? I keep having like near archives, Forbidden Feelings on repeat. That is one track I absolutely love. I know it came out like a few months ago, but I just keep hammering it. Um, there's a duo called Piri and Tommy as well. They've got a new track out called Words and I'm a massive fan of that. It's all like... I think like this is a big year for drum and bass, which is just great to mm. see. And there's just like a lot of D and B upcoming artists that I'm a massive fan on that I'm following. And yeah, um, it's just yeah, there's like they're all like sort of my age as well. So it's just like I said before, it's good to like follow them as well as me and see where we all end up as. End yeah, up at, I, I guess. definitely. <laughs> and so your next single, Chemical Embrace, is that that's coming out on Ministry of Sound, right? Yes, yeah, with Ministry again. Um, haven't got a date yet, but hopefully sometime in the summer. In the summer and yeah. yeah, I can't wait for everyone to hear it. <laughs> yes, I love it. What? Um, I mean, I know we are on Instagram right now, but are there any other places we can catch you socially and where can we hear the music? Yeah, so I'm on Spotify, um, all my socials, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. I'm literally on everything like YouTube, Apple Music, just 
yeah no i've got a link in my instagram bio and it's just got links to like everything that i'm on so you can always follow on there as well nice well it was so awesome to catch up with you and chat with you about music yeah thanks for having me no problems <laughs> is why we're here like music forever um and exactly. yeah have so much fun this summer and i can't wait to hear the new single oh thank you i i, I can probably give you like a little sneak peek of it yes <laughs> thank <please> you do. <laughs> Thank you so much, Emily. Amazing. Have a great night. Thank you. Yes, and you. Bye, everyone. Thanks so much for tuning in. (laughs) Bye-bye. Thanks so much for listening. And don't forget to subscribe and follow to this podcast. I'm Natalie McCool, and you can find me and my music on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and also on my website, nataliemccool.co.uk. Thanks. And I'm a magnet too